this is an Intel Nook. And in this video, we're gonna see, can this handle live streaming? Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So as everybody, well, not as everybody, I get a bunch of questions. And one of the main questions is that a lot of people who are trying to live stream are trying to live stream on equipment that is not capable of actually live streaming. So I dug around all my inventory of leftover computer parts and systems, and I had this nook that I originally used for, um, digital signage. Um, I tried to do this at my church for doing a um, NDI player and stuff like that. And ultimately the last place it was using for is for a free PBX system to try and convince my church to go with voice over IP. But it's just been sitting here. So I decided to install Windows, the latest version of Windows 10 and put OBS on here. And I wanted to see what type of performance I can get out of this if I was gonna live stream with this. Cause this is the cheapest, most underpowered system that I have. And this whole Intel Nook cost me $150. And I literally only had to put in a hard drive and memory. So in total, this whole system was maybe $250. Um, so I wanted to see, is it capable? It's running 16 gigs of memory, actually it's running eight gigs of um, DDR3 memory, and it is running an Intel um, Pentium, which has a, uh, a max boost of, I think, about um, two gigahertz, and it has four cores. I think it's actually two cores and four threads. I'm not 100% sure. I need to get inside the system to test it out, but I thought this might be of interest to you just to see First, to show what happens when you have an underpowered system and how you can solve it thanks to the chip that's inside of here. So let me set this up and let's see what we can do. All right, as you can see, I am on the desktop here and let me just show you my picture in picture so you can see that <laughs> this is capturing from my webcam that's plugged in right now. Um, and I could easily have plugged in my A10 Mini over USB into this, but this is just an example. If I did that, it would make it kind of difficult to record this. So we are going to first go through the settings so I can show you what someone, well, actually, let me minimize this and let's look at the specs of the system. And I use CPU ID and I can show you all the stuff that you need to know about this system. All right, so as you can see, this is an Intel Pentium N3700. It has, and it is hard for me to see this because the screen is so small. All right, it's saying that it has core number zero. Oh, it's right there. So it actually has four cores and four threads. So this is from a core and thread count is the same as uh, Intel, I mean, as an AMD Ryzen 3, but its clock and speed is nowhere close. So it's actually up to 2.4 gigahertz. And like I said, let's see, I can't even remember. Yeah, it's only eight gigabytes of memory inside the system. And that's it. It's actually using the embedded graphics that is on the, honestly, I don't, I think it's on the motherboard. I don't know, cause this, um, this system has a CPU on the motherboard, so you can't change it out. So I don't, I can't remember if it's actually the graphics are on the chip or it's just a graphics chip on the motherboard. I have to research that, but I just don't remember off the top of my head. All right, so like I said, it's not a very powerful system. And I'm gonna open up the performance here and just show you that the only thing I have open is just OBS. And we're at 
50% just by not doing anything. Um, so again, 2.4 gigahertz, four threads. So let's go ahead and open up OBS and I'm gonna try and keep these side by side so that we can see how everything is going on. I have this linked to Vimeo, a private live stream. So nobody is like, what in the world? Well, hold on, let me adjust this. And if it looks like I'm moving slow, I'm actually using a mini <laughs> keyboard with the track um, pad over here. And I'm looking inside of a window of a window to um, navigate here. So that's why it's moving a little slow. So let's go ahead and add custom sound because we want to capture sound from the camera. And now we're capturing sound. All right, so what I'm going to do is go to the settings and let's show you the importance of going from rendering on a processor that's underpowered to using kind of a graphics processor, even if this is an underpowered system. So if we go here to output, as you see right now, I'm gonna switch it to software. So software meaning it's gonna use the CPU to try and do its rendering. And as you can see, just by, we're not doing anything. And we're already at 73 to 80% just handling the software, Windows, and displaying video and audio. So let's go ahead and start streaming to Vimeo. And I want y'all to know, and I'm at, um, I didn't even look at what resolution and everything I'm at right now. So my output, I'm at 720p and I'm at 30 frames a second. And as you can see, we're getting the infamous encoding overload that means that the processor cannot keep up with what's going on and as you can see on all cores we are at a hundred percent and we're streaming like i'm looking at the stream over here and it is a slideshow like i said i am moving here and you see it is a slideshow if not it's like a still image right now so it's like the system cannot keep up with the live stream and that's what a lot of people are experiencing when they're trying to live stream so if we cut back over here and as you can see we're maxed out we're at it's saying right here it's at 45 percent but you can see from here we're at 100 and cutting back over it still hasn't gotten any better you see it says it's an unstable connection but um, I'm not getting anything like that. It's not that it's unstable. It's not sending anything. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And it even says here, try and tuning your video settings um, for a faster encoder. It's telling you that it can't keep up. So let's come over here and we're gonna go back, stop the stream, go into our settings. And we're gonna change our output to use the QSV, which is actually using um, the Intel graphics card. And then sometimes the Intel chip has it um, as well, and you can use this. So now we're just gonna, and it's still trying to stop the stream. <laughs> That's how slow the system is going. All right, so as you can see, we are now switched over to using the hardware encoder, the graphics card inside of this Intel Nook and we have significantly <laughs> better performance. As you can see, we're still streaming at 720p at 30 frames a second. And yes, the CPU is, you know, it's kind of up there, but it's not at 100%, but you see the graphics card is taking the load of all the encoding and it's at 80% and it's chomping through that without an issue. We're not getting any encoder issues and everything like that. So if I cut over and let you see what the stream looks like, See, it's going good. Not anything big performance jumps. So it's a little artifacting in there, a um, little screen tearing. But I mean, again, I think that's just because of how fast I'm moving, you know. But again, that's doable, especially if somebody was just gonna stand there and, um, you know, preach or something like that, and they're not jumping around and stuff like that. So I think this is really cool. Um, and technically I almost would want to try doing this with NDI or something like that, but I don't think I really need to do that at this point. But again, this was just a test to see if this Intel Nook 
could handle the live stream, but also not more than that. It's just to show y'all just the difference between trying to live stream with software and with the GPU. So what I'm gonna do one more time is let's go ahead and stop this. And then let's go over to our settings and we're gonna switch this back to use nothing but software encoding again. And then let's check out the performance again. So we're live streaming now. As you can see, our CPU has now ramped up to 100%. And boom, we're getting our encoder failure again overload. And if we look at our stream, you can see I'm sitting here <laughs> waving and we're live, but it hasn't updated anything yet. So let's go back over here. And again, we're still getting that encoder error. Let's go ahead and stop this. Let's switch over to our hardware encoder one more time. And let's start streaming again. Alright, so we're switched over here and you can see our stuff is performing significantly better. It's not a slideshow. It's not even just a photo just standing still. So that was pretty cool. Honestly, I really didn't even know how that was going to perform. This was just a test and it was mainly to show the difference between software and um, hardware encoding while you're doing your stream because a lot of people are trying to just use their CPU and honestly their CPU is not fast enough to do this. Now with that being said, I always talk about the Ryzen 3 3200G. Now the funny thing about that, it does have a GPU in there but it can handle encoding from software or the GPU and there's no noticeable difference just because I mean that Ryzen chip is a beast so um, this is just an example if you happen to be doing some I'm um, trying to live stream on an underpowered system I still know that you need to have at least a quad core or higher um, now this was a quad core but it was really really slow and it really wasn't up to the task because it's old um, but Every computer has some form of graphics card um, and you might want to check out to see if it's available that you can use and leverage that graphics card to actually improve your streaming and your encoding. Um, you only got three options really. You got Nvidia, you got AMD, you got Intel. Um, hopefully, and now there's a broad range that some of those graphics cards don't support it. I don't have time to get into that, but it's just um, high level. See if you have that option, because if you're trying to encode off of just software, but you have a hardware option, try the hardware option. We've done that and made a couple of changes to about a bunch of churches who've done that, and their stream has transformed in quality um, because of that simple, simple change. So anyway, I will leave a link in the description for that nook not that i'm saying that you need you should get that for streaming but i like the fact that now i tested that that's a good backup um that if anything happened i could roll over to that but again that system can only accept usb input so if you have an a10 mini or some type of capture device that goes over usb that should work um but again i'll leave a link in the description if anybody was interested in that um i just thought that was a really cool test so if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.